Hey guys, it's Matt Faircloth coming at you today. I want to tell you a story about how we bought this 18 unit apartment building that I'm standing in. You can see it's 18 meters here, right? Um, so we bought this 18 unit apartment building with no money out of our pocket. So I want to tell you the story of how we did it and hopefully give you some tips on how you can go out and do the same thing, right? So we started investing very, very small, single family homes, um, small multifamily duplexes, that kind of thing. We did that for years and we built a track record for ourselves, learned landlording, um, learned how to deal with tenants, that kind of thing. And we, we did borrow some money but, and take on investors, but it was, it was immediate, immediate family, not outside investors or outside, outside parties or anything like that. Just you know, small loans and small uh, equity investments um, from immediate family. And we did that for years. Once we got to the point we were comfortable with our business and comfortable with where we were, we started reaching out to investors that came from uh, you know people outside of our family um, that wanted to get involved in real estate but didn't have the time to do the day-to-day -day involved in real estate. And we were willing to do the operation of the asset while they put their money in as silent partners into a deal. So we slowly built that up, built it up, built it up, and started to do larger and larger deals. Uh, before this deal, our biggest deal was a... Um, a five unit, right? So we're from five unit to an eighteen unit, um, and that. So that's that's kind of how we how we grew from three, four, five unit buildings um, up to an eighteen unit, right? Um, to get into larger buildings like this is an eighteen unit building. What we had to do is we had to start networking with larger brokers because the guys that were selling us buildings like the you know the two unit, the three unit, the four unit building. They may think that they can sell us an 18 unit apartment building, and I'm sure they'd love to, but they don't, they're not in that network. They're not aware of the people that own buildings like this and, uh, and the places to go to, uh, to sell them, right? Or to find the buyers, to find the sellers, that kind of thing. So we need to get into a different network of realtors and brokers to uh, get access to buildings like this. So over years of time, I network more and more with commercial real estate brokers, not residential real estate brokers that can sell you small multis, but Big guy, big commercial brokers, guys that deal with, like this is a small piece for them, like they get into bigger stuff, right? So I started to network with those guys, uh, go to look at buildings, even buildings I knew that I couldn't afford, I still want to go look at it with them if they invited me out to their open houses and that kind of thing. So I wanted to get to know how big real estate worked, how bigger multifamilies, uh, how they operated, you know, how, what kind of profit potential they had. So I started to underwrite, meaning, you know, write it out and determine the profit potential, profit and loss, all that kind of stuff for bigger deals. And I got to know a lot of the guys in the commercial business, even though I wasn't at the point where I could swing a building like that. I just, I knew that's where I wanted to go. And so we just networked and networked and networked with the, the bigger commercial brokers. And as our investment pool grew and grew, we did larger and larger deals with our investors. We were able to raise enough money eventually to do a deal that one of these guys had to offer us. So we found this building. This building was a great deal. As you may know, the uh, multifamily market's really, really hot right now. There's a lot of people buying multifamily. So, you know, multifamily can be a bit overpriced. But the, what we did was we found a building that needed some work. This building had nine units of the 18 were vacant because just stories old by, owned by an older guy, didn't want to deal with it anymore, so you let a lot of vacancy come into the building, but it was in good condition aside from the vacancies, right? So we stepped in, bought the building based on the performance of the nine units that were occupied and a few dollars extra for the nine units that were vacant, and we you know, purchased the buildings. We got a great price on the, on the building, didn't have to pay full market rate price, which again in, in, uh, in multifamily is really, really high right now because a lot of people want to get into multifamily, right? So we found a great deal in the building. We're able to lease out the vacant units and it's not fully occupied, so it's making a really good profit, um, but it's because we bought it right, okay? So the, uh, the way that we got into it with no money out of our pocket was we took all those investors that we had worked with for years on larger and larger deals and we raised 500,000 from those investors and some new investors as well that were even friends of those investors introduced us to new people and new people that had contacted us came into this building so we raised 500k over eight investors and they came in as limited partners in the deal we were the general partner so that's called a limited liability partnership which you can look up or talk to an attorney about forming um, so we were the general partner they were the limited partners in this deal they had direct ownership of the building we guaranteed the mortgage on this property, the purchase price was 1.05 million. 
Uh, we put 350k of that 500,000 into this building. The other 150k we put into other investments, other smaller stuff, right? So the investors were a little diversified. We didn't put all their eggs into this basket. Um, we put 350k in equity in, put a mortgage on the property, and you know the the property is now performing well. So the investors are happy. We're happy, and most importantly, we were able to do this deal by putting investors' money in. We still got ownership. We didn't get a, I don't own the whole, the whole building uh, ourselves. We have some investors in, but I'm able to leverage an asset like this, um, and I can tell you, buildings like this have a lot of benefits, such as maintenance, um, management, all these things are all easy because everything's under one roof. There's not 18 roofs, there's one roof. There's not 18 whatever it is, you know, there's, there's one of those things, like common areas, um, all these different things. It's very easy to maintain a building of this size because it's all compartmentalized here, right? So here's your takeaways, okay? Number one, develop a track record for yourself, whether that's on your own or align yourself with someone that has a track record because you don't want to go out and pitch investors to work with you to go buy an 18 unit apartment building like this if you've never done a real estate deal before. So, hate to tell you, for those of you guys that want to get started and get started quick, you got to develop a track record in this business before you go and take down a big building like this. That's number one. Number two, get network with people that are trading the kind of buildings you want to get into. So if you want to grow to get into commercial buildings, even though you're not ready to go there just yet, start to network with the guy, the big commercial brokers that are in your area. Tell them that you're interested. Tell them you want to start seeing their listings of properties that come up and get to know them. And if they'll allow you to come out to their open houses or to when they have brokers opens or whatnot and just let you in the building so you can start underwriting it and looking at the performance of the building, do it. Get to know these buildings, surround yourselves by it, surround yourself around them, and you'll be able to grow into it as you build more and more investors, right? Number three, talk to an attorney about the way to structure equity partnerships. It's, it's not the most simple thing in the world, but it's also not that complicated. See if you can get an attorney to take, you know, take an attorney out to lunch and ask him about structuring an equity deal, because that's how we bought this building, is through, was through an equity partnership, okay? So those are, those are three tips uh, that I can give you on how to buy an 18 unit apartment building. And one more, just always make sure you buy something that has a way for you to add value to it. If you just buy straight market price, you're not gonna get a great deal. You gotta buy a building that's got some hair on it, that's got something going on, whether it's a management issue, like a bunch of vacancy, or a building that needs some work. That's the way you're gonna get a great price on an asset versus something that's you know, priced at the market. Because unfortunately the market's really, really hot for bigger multifamily right now. So um, I hope that helps. Um, I may have left something out, but that's okay. You can ask me about it down below, leave a comment, and uh, we can get a conversation going so I can help you guys get some ideas on how you can go and buy yourself a nice mid-sized multifamily building with no money out of your pocket as well. Thanks for watching. Hope this is of value to you and have a great day.